Hello guys, starting off here on a nice weather Sunday. Uh, just hanging out at the shop. I got some stuff I wanna get started with the R34. I've just been spending most of the morning cleaning to just try to get some workspace. Because I gotta start pulling apart the interior so I can get to the Tessa unit so I can pull that out and get access to the fuel pump. And once I can do that, then I can start figuring out the fuel system for it, which is one of the most tedious things left in the build because finishing is right around the corner. It's crazy, when I first worked on this car, it wasn't that intimidating, but now that they've appreciated so much, I'm actually more scared working in the car now than when I was when I first got it. You better not breathe too heavily on this thing. Yeah, for real. But one thing I noticed, it was kind of weird. Every single S chassis I've ever worked on is never like bolted down on the rear seat. You just kind of rip it up like S chassis, R chassis, whatever. These have bolts here. And they also look like they have like some extra bracing that I don't usually see on other S chassis, which is kind of cool. But uh, yeah, just pulling out the back seat so I can get access. Those bolts that I talked about in the last video. Looks like it's been out before because there's just one bolt holding it in. Um, yeah, let's rip it out. I'm just gonna leave it out probably for the duration of the build. Mm -hmm. In case I need a wire or anything or so I do actually have v-spec two seats which have tripled since I bought them <laughs> sorry Tommy I bought them off Tommy and he sold them to me before the prices skyrocketed but I only have the front seats I was bidding on a set of rear seats they like sold for a hundred dollars more than I bid which made me really angry but I was sleeping when it went up um, but my dream is to have v-spec two interior in this car but with the prices of things and how rare it's getting it like seems almost impossible now. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with those seats, but I don't wanna just put them in here and then have mismatching door cards and rear seats and everything. Yeah, I think the rear seats wound up going for like 32 at the time, or they went for like 33 and I bid 32, which is crazy because I thought that was ridiculous. And now I bet they go for almost double that. Yeah. Boom, smash goes windshield. Please don't. I feel so big and bulky trying to work around on this car. I want to keep that safe. Oh my God. <laughs> Where did you get that? My R34 GTR. <laughs> Came with it. <laughs> Who'd you buy this thing off of? His name was, was it? Dan's Rods and Customs. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, getting this rear seat out is going to be a challenge. Yeah. Just don't know that we're going to be able to fit it through here. I wanted to take a quick break from my video to give a message from one of our sponsors, LZMFG. If you aren't aware, a lot of the products used in this video, including Dishworks products, including BC Racing coilovers, including ECU Master yes. products, and including Plasma Man intake manifolds. We just got a new shipment in. This, what you see right here, is a beautiful stock ITB setup for an RB26 DETT or DET if you're lame and have only one turbo. Uh, I have this in stock as well as 2JZ. Evo, S13 SR just came in on top of RB25, Neo, non-Neo, 1JZ, S14 SR. I think that's it. Yeah. All in stock, ready to ship. Skip the wait, secure your fate at LZMFG. So we have the back seat out, but we can't take it out because it's in the lift. So we're trying to figure out which bolts he needs to remove from the back or from in there. They look like they're probably down here. Yeah, the it's the lower half. There's one that's right near this one. Yep. And then next to that one as well. It's over here, right? Yeah, more to the right. That one? Yep. Is that it? There's still bolts in back here, but uh, it looks like it. I can't really see beyond there. Right, I'll, leave, I'll leave this for now and start working back there. Okay. Hopefully that's it. Looks like it. Yeah, but now there's like... Oh, yeah, I think it's the harness. Gotta figure out how to unplug the fancy plug. Check back in once I figure it out. Pro tip, if you ever need to see like a plug or something, you can turn the flash always on on your iPhone and then put it in video mode and then you can see what you're working with. So now I can see I have to push this little release down with like a flathead and I should be able to pop this off. Hopefully it's just on top and not on the bottom too. Yeah. Appears as if I got it released. Ah, so I think that's the only one. I hope there's not one. Oh, there's, God, there's one on the bottom too. Uh-oh. I think you're supposed to do this from the other side. So it actually would have been physically impossible to unplug this lower unit without pulling the seat off, because as you can see, it's like an ECU plug where it's actually bolted in. Wild. Got two little pluggies here. Wait. So let's see if we can figure out what all these are. I know one's to control the Atessa. One, maybe, I guess. 
because it's electronic in these cars. Mm. I don't. I have no idea, so I don't want to talk and make it sound like I know what I'm talking about. But yeah, well, something says yaw sensor rate, so that probably has to do with the uh, the active yaw control fancy diff crap that we're deleting too. So we might be able to delete one of these entirely, but we don't want any lights on the dash, so we're just gonna leave everything in. I don't really care about weight for this car. Um, I just want it to be fun. Look, I can see my fuel pump. Where's the fuel pump? Oh, that's the fuel pump. What's oh, under this? I watched it not be under this. It's like three more ECUs. Oh, so that's a fuel pump? <laughs> is this dual pumps? I think it is. Think dual so. fools? I think it is, maybe we'll see. Uh. These pumps are kind of tricky. I remember the first time I pulled another 33. It has like a weird thing that it sits on on the side hanger. Um, I believe it comes out in two pieces. I don't remember fully, um, but I got my little pan here to catch it. And let's let's see. That ring was a pain to get off. So we got the upper half, and then yeah, you got the hoses and stuff. You have to like reach in, like go deep. Oh, that sucks. I know, but you got to be careful because you don't want to mess up the fuel sending unit. It is a process. Nissan, why you do this? I'm gonna try to unplug to make life easier so I can see what's going oh on. Oh my god, I can see it way in there. Yep, my eyes are about to burn. So I don't know if I mentioned in this video, but this car had MS-109 in it the last time it ran, just because it had like a GDM tune on it where it was detonating with our pump gas. Mm. Um, well, it actually stinks a lot less than I feel like it would if it had pump gas in here, do you agree? Yeah. <sighs> Let me get some fresh air for a second. <laughs> Now we have located the fuel pump. Imagine never doing this. I remember the first time I did this on the R33. I was like, "What the?" F yeah, that's way in there. Yep. Yep. Oh. Oh. Give light, give me light. I did not execute this well. It's okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh my god, it stinks so bad. <coughs> oh. Mm. <coughs> <coughs> I don't think we need to use any of this other stuff. Someone watched iDubs recently. What's that? Huh? The cool thing about 93 is absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> the, the only cool thing about 93 is we use it to clean our E85 injectors. <laughs> so I don't really understand this stuff. Must these pump, these these are for the, the, the fuel, the fuel? No, we, we got the fuel pumpy. So uh, one of the complicated things that can be annoying and look kind of sloppy when it comes to like fuel pump setups, I was running a relay. So especially in Nissans, you have a fuel voltage loss, so you need to put a relay, especially using two pumps. But the nice thing is the battery's in the trunk. So um, I actually have these MSD solid state relay blocks that are pretty cool. Um, they don't have fuses per se, but they kind of have their own like little fail safe where they'll kill the circuit if there's an issue. So what I can do is just run one wire from the battery and there's actually four individual relays built into this. Um, only thing is the, the maximum like continuous amperage is 20. And uh, I know the DSWRX DW400 pumps are gonna be running at 80 PSI, pull very close to that. Um, so for a little bit of extra headroom, I'm using two of the relays per pump. So this is just gonna be kind of going into one. Um, this is actually my first DTM connector I've ever used, but now that Freddy's around and he's been doing all fancy wiring, I'm trying to step my game up. But I feel like this um, mounted in the trunk versus having two separate relays and fuses will make it a lot simpler. And then the whole logic behind putting a plug here is so if we need to diagnose and test to make sure individual pumps are working, we'll have an individual plug pump here and then I'll have another individual plug pump here. Uh, the top hat that I have, I picked up, can uh, basically mount two or three pumps in the tank. Uh, it's got like kind of a little harness to work with. I'm having issue getting the stock fuel sending unit out, so I'm gonna wait for Johan's help tomorrow since he's probably done it a million times on the 14s. But these three power wires are the ones, or really two, since we're only doing two pumps, uh, will be what will end up going to this. And then I just need to make a little ground harness and then figure out if we can run the A online without dropping the tank. So I'm hoping we can, because it'll make life a lot simpler, but uh, it is looking like we might have to. 
Random thing on my list of things to do. Um, one of the periods in transport when this car is strapped down, this, uh, I don't even know what you'd call it, his rear valance got cracked. So uh, I'm going to put a new one on. I'm gonna have to trim it for this, for the fin, but uh, yeah, why not? I have a new one already painted here, but I'm nervous that it's gonna get damaged and maybe I shouldn't put it on right now. I just wanna do stuff and there's like not a lot of stuff I can do because I keep running into roadblocks, like I'm out of connectors or I'm out of this, I'm out of that, for this. All painted. Should be able to just pop right on. Well, you can actually use this piece perfectly to line up on the new one and figure out where you have to cut. Oh, that's funny, huh? <laughs> And another thing that I can't finish. I don't want to mount this yet because the diffuser is actually just like ghetto mocked up right now because we're going to have to pull it off tomorrow and I don't want to go mount it all up to trim this in the right place and then have to do it. Ugh. I'll find something else. Day two, man, I'm craving some back roads in this thing. I really, really, really want to go up to the Smokies, but I feel like it's probably still snowy and super cold up there. So hopefully it uh, defrosts up there soon because I'm, I'm itching. Me and Colette for Valentine's Day actually went on like a really cute date and we went uh, on some of the better driving roads in Florida. Um, but still, it's like, it's not even comparable. That's the biggest negative for Florida, by far. It's rough. Downshifts on this thing never get old. So good. You remember when last night I was like, man, Johan's probably pulled like 17 of these out. I was right. Yeah. So that was a good thing we waited. <laughs> oh. Because I knew you used to have an S14, so I'm like, there's no way you haven't pulled one of these sending units out before. Why well, didn't have an S14? I thought you did. Not really. Not now. Oh, your JC is an S13. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. He forgets. Damn. I don't know how. It's f***ed up. Yeah. Take it back. Don't pay attention. Yeah, don't even, I'll, don't even you don't know what's going on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, funny story is, I had an S14 for like a day, and then I gave it to my friend Andres, and then Andres gave it to Kevin Lawrence, which is Kevin Lawrence Pro One car right now. Damn, <laughs> which funny. that S14 I got from Marco. Yep. She's been around so, a lot. She's been around a little bit. A little bit. Have fun. What's that like? <laughs> <laughs> you don't get light. <laughs> Nah, I'm in, brother. Fancy camera don't have lights? No. Oh. Tricky to explain. But. Uh, let's see here. Oh, well, that flew inside. So, this sits in the tank like that. Mm -hmm. There's a metal tab that goes through that channel there. And I saw online that you spray a screwdriver through there. But it's hard because you don't see. Uh, and you can use for me i could only use my hand one hand and being that i'm in here it makes it tough mm -hmm. so i just put i did a bend on the screwdriver jammed it in there and then turned it and it stayed stuck between the metal bracket yeah and the sending unit and then i just like quickly tapped it and it popped out so sick i got lucky there so now you're taking that out completely or are you i may drain it take it out and put the pumps in and then okay uh or maybe i just swing it to the side but just for fitting purposes i'm gonna take it out yeah make sure everything fits get the right length and uh then fish this down that's that clip you can see the primer on the screwdriver so i just jammed the screwdriver between that mm -hmm. and the metal clip that came through it so Imagine this, that metal clip inside the car, but completely solid. I put the screwdriver between that, Push turned it, and then I just like jammed it. Yeah. Um, if you drop a screwdriver in there, you will have to remove this because you won't be able to get it out. <laughs> so, yeah. Johan, what did you do? Um, screwdriver for in the gas tank. Now I gotta That's go what? balls deep in the MS-109. Let's get in there. <laughs> Come on. I need a long glove. Wrap me up with the... With the... <laughs> You'll be all right. Oh, man, look at my hands. Yeah. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah. <laughs> you weren't wearing gloves? No. <laughs> Crazy. When do I wear gloves? Uh, no. I don't. No. Nope. <laughs> 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 nah, just go ahead. 
already grab it? No. What's so funny? <laughs> go ahead, put your glove on. I know it's going to go past the glove. Oh, okay. I'm not stupid. <laughs> so why wear a glove? I, that's why I said I was going to wrap my arm. Oh, really? Yeah, but Colette likes me for my skin. Really? <laughs> no. I don't know what she likes me for. I feel like this is the best idea. Ah, damn, my Adam. This is gonna be fun to take off. What do you mean? All the hairs. Yeah, just keep it going. This tape will be repurposed to package your items. Yeah. This is a great time to mention that we are an authorized reseller of Dishworks products. If you need to buy your fuel pumps, get them from us. We absolutely know what we're doing. We don't drop screwdrivers and gas tanks. <laughs> we need to go on recovery missions. All right. Oh Ready for war. All right, where is it? Um, on the right. How long so it's on the arm? right? Where the, <laughs> where, where the, yeah. that thing is, the fuel center. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you. I have Dang. done it. My glove is full of gasoline now. Ready for this? Oh, oh my god. god. <laughs> oh god. Help, I'm melting! <laughs> it's probably really not good for you, huh? Probably not. Oh, let me get out of here. Probably not as bad as 93, though. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all laughed at me for the tape. You can see the the line of where the gasoline got in the glove. <laughs> this kit's based around a Walboro 255. We want to run the DW400s because it'll support way more power, especially on E85 where the fuel demands are a lot higher. But because it's based around a Walboro 255, the pumps are a lot smaller and they would technically sit like this. So because the d pumps are gonna sit a bit lower, Yolan's just gonna modify this rod to move the pumps up so they can sit in the proper spot. I marked it here so that I have um, room. So when I put the pipe next to it, or I'll just stack it um, for now, but um, that's the height I'm going up so that the pump fits in there because right now it's bottom and mount. And that's the only pump that it, this hanger was built around. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll cut it there and tag it in four places and uh, fit it again. I might undercut it to not take too much material away, mm -hmm. even though I could add material, that's not a problem. But we'll do that now and see. Yeah. Can I just fits. say one thing? Look at that fresh cut, oh. my guy. Sheesh! <laughs> For fitment, I'll bevel it, maybe, I don't know. Doesn't have to be, as long as it's holes, yeah. it'll be all right. Um, it's hard to see, but now the pumps fit in nicely. Um, they're on the top hole, which is what, um, per instructions, what uh, Powerhouse says to put them. Um, and now I'll just gotta take them back out, assemble them. Uh, put the filters on it, uh, we'll finish welding the rod, and then run the hoses first. We're gonna run the hoses first. I'm gonna measure the length from down there up to the somewhat up here to the where the cap sits, mm -hmm. and then get an idea of how long that need to be. So I was trying to confirm that this pump could be clamped up here because I was concerned. I know the, I looked it up online, somebody made a video on it. They opened them up. The pump was up top. The motor is not up here. There's nothing up here. It's just a, a plastic housing with the, all the components coming down. The important parts are in this compartment. Mm -hmm. um, so clamping down this won't, won't hurt the pump.
<laughs> that bucket says, whoa, this is heavy. It's a diff. You're different. Oh, I see. Big chunk. Chunks. You made a mess. You made a mess of your diff. The welds didn't break. The welds look fine. Yeah. Will diff oil light on fire? Yeah. yeah. There's one way to find out. Like, will it stay burning? Yeah. Oil. Can we put it out? It's Every time Adam cracks a diff open, he always needs to light something on fire. I've learned this. Is it really? Yeah. Well, that's usually how we clean it before we weld it. Yeah. Okay. He's ready to go. Uh, disinfectant. It's too close to things. Should we take it out of bucket so we don't just throw bucket? Yeah, it'd be a shame to. Touch it. We already lost it. Yeah. Don't want to lose a <laughs> Oh my god, Adam. <laughs> Oh, oh my, my god. god. <laughs> Sir. Oh no. Oh, not the bucket. Yeah, that bucket going to melt on your garage floor. That's going to make a stupid mess. Adam. Consistent strength. Adam. Adam. Why are you like this? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I accidentally let my phone fire. Who <laughs> imagine? The wind burns me right in the face. <laughs> Sir. It's so fun. We ran out of firewood. So, what Let else are you gonna do? Let there be warmth. <laughs> so, men, look away. I walk out to a freaking fire pit. Wee -hoo, wee -hoo, wee -hoo, wee -hoo. Hey, what you just fell out? Oh, that's. <laughs>